Let's talk about transitioning from an LLC to an S corporation. What are the tax implications? So here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. Basically, changing from an LLC to an S corporation can be really uh, beneficial for some business owners, including you maybe, right? Now, having said that, a lot of small businesses choose to form an LLC in the first place instead of uh, a corporation due to the flexibility, but also uh, fewer formalities in terms of uh, reporting requirements, okay? So if, however, you decide that the corporation is a better business structure for you, then you can simply convert your LLC to an S corporation. Now, I, it's important though, you need to keep in mind that if you want to change to an S corporation for the tax benefits, you can still continue operating as an, as an LLC, but elect to be taxed as an S corporation. So you have the flexibility there, okay? You don't have to uh, change things like from on the state side or on the federal side if you or if you like it the way it is currently, okay? Now let's talk about LLC to S corporation for tax purposes. The IRS does not recognize LLCs as entities. So if it, so it really depends upon uh, what kind of a uh, setup you have. Are you a single member LLC or are you a multi-member LLC? If an LLC fails to elect to be taxed as a different business structure, then the default rules will apply. Therefore, if one person chooses to form an LLC, in other words, we have a single member LLC, that person will be taxed as a disregarded entity. This means what? It means the LLC will be taxed as a sole proprietorship and the owner, in this case, the member, will report the profits and losses of the LLC on his or her personal tax return. So when you file your uh, your Form 1040 Schedule C, you put you actually uh, report your, the profits and losses on that Schedule C. It also means what? It also means that the, the owner will be will pay Social Security and Medicare tax. If a multi-member LLC fails to elect to be taxed differently, then it will be taxed as a partnership. So when we talk about partnership here, you have to file what? You have to file Form 1065 and uh, and then Schedule K1. Okay. Now there are benefits of an S corporation, and it's really important to remember those. There are many, many, many benefits. You have uh, saving on self-employment tax. You can contribute additional money to your retirement account, and you have additional tax deductions too. So it's really important to think about it that way. Now there are several instances when it should be beneficial for you to convert your LLC to an S corporation, including when self-employment tax is greater than the amount of tax that will be paid. If operating as an S corporation. Therefore, if your LLC has a $40,000 net profit, you should convert an S corporation. Okay. LLC members must pay self-employment tax, usually equivalent to the amount contributed into the LLC in the first place. The reason for this is that because the LLC operates as a pass-through entity, tax entity, which means that the members will report the profits and losses on their own personal tax return but only to the extent of capital that they contributed to the LLC in the first place. And so this self-employment tax can be quite high though. So the thing is that the, the scenario is different for S corporation because owners in an S corporation can pay themselves a reasonable salary, which means that the owner will only have to pay social security tax and Medicare tax the same way in which all employees are taxed. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Let me talk to you about, let me give you a, a strategy here. So are you really listening to me right now and considering a change from LLC to S corporation? You really need to think deep here, okay? And it's all about what are your reasons? What are wh What is the vision that you have? I've already established to you that there are advantages as well as uh, like uh, disadvantages when it, com when it comes to uh, starting an LLC in the first place and also changing from LLC to S corporation. The bottom line here is that if you are just uh, after tax benefits, then you need to actually uh, continue to operate as an LLC, but, al but only uh, file taxes as an S corporation. You don't have to change things on the regulatory side of things. What I'm trying to say here is that because, because some states are pretty uh, strict when it comes to LLC, S corporation, C corporation, partnership, and so on and so forth. So some states will actually re will require you to, re to file articles of uh, organization or, or amendments to your uh, articles of organization and actually change your status at the state level. So instead of being an LLC, you are now an S corporation. What I'm trying to say here is that you can still remain an LLC and just file S corporation status at the federal level, okay? And it's, it's one of those things where you have to really understand. Once you, the when we talk about uh, tax implications, 
we're, we're, th we're talking about things like uh, tax savings, but most importantly, self-employment tax. So after you switch from LLC to S corporation, you have the self-employment tax. Okay. And you are basically also have to think about the retirement account that I spoke to you about earlier. So this is uh, so unlike LLC members, shareholders in uh, the S corporation can set up both Roth solo 401k and solo 401k accounts. So the company is then able to contribute higher amounts on your behalf. And it's important though, to know that an S corporation is not a business, but rather an, a task classification. So it's really important to remember that. And, uh, according to the IRS, an S corporation is a corporation that elects to pass corporate income taxes, losses, deductions, credits through to their shareholders for federal tax purposes. In this way, it's kind of similar to an LLC when you think about it. And uh, so there are two essential ways to uh, convert your business from an LLC to an S corporation. You can simply change the tax election from a, from a partnership to corporation and then to S corporation by filing a few forms with the IRS or you can convert the legal forms of the business from LLC to a corporation. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about transitioning from LLC to S corporation. What are the tax implications? Now, can a few issues arise in this process? Let's talk about that. Yes. What are the issues that can arise? In order to, con to be considered an S corporation, your business, your LLC, needs to meet certain requirements. First of all, it must be a domestic company, meaning a foreign LLC cannot be converted to an, to an S corporation. In this case, when we talk about S corporation, we're speaking about, uh, like when I talk about uh, domestic company, in, in other words, it, it must be located in the United States. I'm not speaking about foreign LLC or domestic LLC based on the states, because like, you know, if you are, if you, if your LLC is registered in New York and you go to Georgia, for instance, you are considering Georgia a foreign LLC, but the foreign LLC I'm speaking here, I'm talking about here is an LLC that's maybe uh, registered in uh, Luxembourg or Brazil or, or Nigeria. And you're trying to really come here to operate in the United States and you want to seek S corporation uh, status, it will not work. Okay, only certain types of shareholders are allowed. That is individuals, some trust and estates, partnerships, corporations, or non-resident aliens may not be shareholders in the new S corporation that you're trying to really convert to. You got to have 100 or fewer shareholders and only one class of stock. This means that there is not, there is actually, there is an equal distribution of equity and liquidation preferences among the shareholders. I mean, the IRS is pretty strict here because the IRS wants to make sure that all shareholders are quote unquote sort of treated equally in the S corporation. And uh, the S corporation may not be an, uh, an ineligible corporation. For example, some financial institutions, insurance companies, and domestic international sales corporations are not eligible. And there are also a few ad additional drawbacks to consider when deciding to convert from an LLC to an, to an S corporation. What you can save in terms of taxation may be offset by increased paperwork and hassle. So because the shareholders are paid a salary, the corporation may need to implement a payroll system and file for workers' compensation insurance. And furthermore, if you are considering bringing, bringing on outside investors or are interested in retaining profits in a company bank account, a C corporation might be a better choice. So let's talk about when you should change. Again, we're still having a conversation about transitioning from LLC to S corporation, the tax implications. So timing, timing is really important here because uh, it's one of those things where you want to make sure you're not making uh, changes that will have a little one a, a financial or a fiscal drawback on your operations. The general rule of thumb is that switching to a corporation makes sense when the self-employment tax becomes greater than the additional burden of an S corporation would be. Okay, I, I want to repeat that so it's pretty clear. The general rule of thumb is that switching to a corporation makes sense when the self-employment tax becomes greater than the additional burden of an S corporation would be. This normally happens around the 40K, so 40,000 profit mark, 
but depending on the circumstances, it can be as, as low as 25K. Now, if you have a question about that, please let us know in the comment section and we'll let us know. We'll, we'll actually explain to you further. The thing here is that it really depends upon the, the industry you're in, depends upon the state you're in, and also your company's, your ALC's financial situation. So let us know if you want, uh, you want us to go granular, we'll be able to explain things to you further. And uh, however, it's important to check with your state laws also. Some states like California and New York may tax both the S corporation and the shareholders. So that you have double taxation here. And if you decide to change your business, your business's tax status, the LLC simply chooses to be taxed as an S corporation. And this can be done by uh, filing IRS form 8832, informing the IRS you, you would like to be taxed as a corporation. Afterwards, it's necessary to file Form 2553, electing to be taxed as an S corporation. Okay, so those are these two these two steps you got to take them, and the deadlines are quite strict. These filings must be completed by March 15th of the year of the year in which the change will should take effect. Although with a valid cause for delay, you can apply for relief in case of a late election. So this is kind of important. Well, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about from LLC to S Corporation, what are the tax implications? Another question is, should we, should you really pursue conversion instead of tax election? It's one of those things you have to always think about. If you choose, it's generally possible to actually change the business setup. This means Instead of simply uh, selecting to be taxed as an S corporation, the business itself is converted into a corporation. There are three types of conversion here. Let, let's quickly go granular here. So you have statutory conversion, you have statutory merger, and you have non-statutory merger. Let's quickly talk about that. So statutory, statutory conversion, this is the simplest methodology, but it's not allowed in all states. Conversion occurs simply by filing a few forms with the Secretary of State's office. So that's one of those things where you have to actually uh, reach out to your state level, I mean, to your state authorities to see if they allow this sort of statutory conversion. Then you also have the statutory merger. So this is a slightly more complicated. Essentially, you form a new corporation of which the, the uh, LLC members are now corporate stockholders. Then the LLC members and uh, slash corporate shareholders approve the merger from uh, both roles and then you have the non-statutory merger so a non-statutory merger a non-statutory merger is the most expensive and most complex so after forming a new corporation you formally transfer all asset all asset and liabilities from uh, the uh, LLC to the corporation then you formally exchange the LLC membership interest for corporate shares it's really important to say that wh whether you go with uh, you go for a statutory merger or a non-statutory merger, especially a non-statutory merger, you want to actually, uh, you want to uh, reach out to a professional. So you can reach out to a certified public accountant. You can reach out to an, an enrolled agent. You can reach out to a tax attorney who has, uh, who really understands the ins and outs of a statutory merger and non-statutory merger. So you really want to equip your, yourself with, uh, with, with guidance from uh, a professional. This is really important because it's important because the last thing you want to actually make a mistake that will cost you big time. So when we talk about changing from an LLC to an S corporation, it's it's important to understand it's it's uh, one of those things where you gotta ask yourself, what are the benefits for me? Okay, an LLC. Remember, an LLC is a is a very attractive structure because of the flexibility, ease of setup, and initial tax benefits. So if you want to actually convert to an S corporation, be aware of uh, the implications there also. Let me talk, let me give you a few pro tips here. So when we talk about converting an LLC to an S corporation, there are a few things you need to pay attention to. First of all, remember, you might have neg negative tax capital account balances because there is a trap that occurs if any of the LLC's members have negative tax capital account balances. In other words, the LLC's liabilities are greater than the tax basis of the LLC's assets at the time of the conversion, in which case search members will recognize taxable income equal to the negative tax capital account balance. That is an LLC member with a neg negative tax capital account balance of $100,000, for example, of the 
at the time of the conversion will be deemed to have $100,000 of taxable income. So the potential tax cost should be considered as a threshold in determining whether a conversion is prudent. In fact, it should be one of the first questions asked, okay? And if there are significant negative tax capital account balances, it is, it is really unlikely a conversion will be worthwhile due to the significant resulting tax liabilities of the members. So this actually is, is important for you. If you're listening to me right now, if you are a single member LLC transitioning to an S corporation, not a problem. But if you are a multi-member LLC transitioning to an S corporation, you really want to pay attention to the, to the to this negative tax capital account balances, okay? And so also remember that there is a requirement of, have, of uh, having an S corporation eligible shareholders, right? We already spoke about the fact that you got to have uh, fewer than 100 and uh, all shareholders must be American citizens or American like a US, res uh, US residents. You also have the requirement of the single class of stock, right? This is kind of important in terms of uh, like uh, you're not trying to have preferred stocks and common stock. No, you gotta have you gotta have a single uh, set of stock. And so overall, it's one of those things where you gotta really make sure. So after filing form 2553, uh, 2553 and uh, 8832, then all uh, all uh, operational uh, procedures are being followed. But you can you can uh, pretty much change an like an LLC to an S corporation within within a week because. Uh, basically i mean unless you are in a state that's a little quote unquote complicated okay if, if you're a state because you have to understand that if your state does not automatically follow what the IRS has, has decided for your classification then you have to do what you have to actually uh, follow the same you have to follow the same procedure at the federal level but also at the state level okay so it's always important before you start anything to actually either uh, reach out to a, a local lawyer or you just uh do some, some research, you know, do some due diligence. You go to your state's uh, revenue tax department, like revenue tax departments, I mean, revenue departments, and see what's really happening there. And it's one of those things where you always have to see what really works for you. It's, uh, it's always uh, what works for you versus what doesn't work for you, okay? Be, uh, be really careful there. So let me give you a bonus here. I think I've, I've said it before, but I, I just want to uh, say it again because uh, I think it's a really important. Once you do switch from an LLC to S corporation, well, self-employment tax savings, okay? Self-employment tax savings, you want to really make sure that you are you are really, really reaping the benefits there because otherwise it's not really worth it. Worth it. You have tax preferred retirement savings. You also have the salary. You also have to think about there is a right time to convert your LLC to S corporation. Think about the salary amount, the foreign earned income exclusion, and your state also. So your state will have a, a big impact on to uh, how you actually do things. So when we talk about, uh, when, when I talk about your, uh, let's say, uh, self-employment tax savings, it's all about thinking about the 15.3% self-employment tax, okay? You also think about the uh, tax preferred retirement savings. I've spoken about, about that. But uh, before you actually convert your LLC to S corporation, Think about the, the salary amount. Think about the foreign earned income exclusion. So if the owner qualifies for the foreign earned income exclusion, then he or she can exclude up to $107,600 in, uh, in like, uh, it's about 110,000 this year with a salary from income tax. And uh, so to actually uh, do this properly, you have to actually, first of all, make sure that you have uh, your financials. You have to actually uh, sit down with uh, your accountant your tax advisor and see what really works for you so here is the approach and, and i'm gonna end on, on this one here's the approach for you is switching to an s corporation right for you that, that that's the big question it really depends upon your situation it's one of those things where you got to really sit down and see what really works for you and what doesn't work for you when we talk about uh when, when we talk about it it all starts it, 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 it okay so when we talk about switching from LLC to s corporation it's not just about taxes because when you have an S corporation, there are certain things you can do that you can't do as an LLC, right? So as an S corporation, you might not be able to actually uh, invite other investors, foreign investors. If you're an LLC, you can have you you can have uh, foreign partners, you can have foreign members. That's totally possible. But then you also but you have the tax benefits if you're an, if you're an S corporation. So it's, you got to really look at the 
the best of both worlds and see what really works for your your, your situation right now very important to look at things uh, I, I would say from a holistic point of view Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about transitioning from LLC to S Corporation. I gave you the overview, the strategy, the pro tips, the bonus, and now the approach. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.